One sixteenth bolsa sides. I've put some big cutouts on the rear half to save CG weight. Okay, there we go. Right now we've got a selection of formers. Well, I could certainly put that in and set it. F four A goes there. This is um, quite a crude fuselage. It's not going to be as curved as the Guillo split file, which I've been looking at. This is going to be a little bit more squarer. But it's still going to look pretty good, I reckon. If I glue F4 in, the floor will hold it like that upright. And then all I've got to do is to put a square there to hold it upright. And that will be one former in. Okay, so the tailplane is going to sit here, uh, which I haven't made yet. I haven't even looked at it, I haven't even got the outline drawn, I think that's about all. Although I did make it about 10% bigger. Don't tell anyone. Now, F5 goes in there. I've got to do going to be a triangular bit on the top 3 16 going down to give me a little bit of a rounded shape I'm not completely angular so I'm, see there's lots of air in there air gives you um, lightness air doesn't weigh a great deal It'd be fun to see a slow fly spit fight we'll go away and come back in a little while all right we'll let that dry and come back to it in a couple of hours, I've got a piece of 3 16 soft on the top here, which I'll use to uh, round up a little bit and get nice. Okay, doesn't look much like a spit, <laughs> does it? But um, so, first thing to do is to cut these side pieces down to the correct dimensions. Yeah, it's still feeling very light. It's only made out of 16th balsa, so actually what I might do is to have a go at um, shaping this down when the tail plane and fin is drying. So what I've got, I've got the components still on the laser. I'll get them down in a moment. But I've got the fin and rudder and the tail plane and elevator to cut out. Exciting moment again guys, this is the all the tail feather components uh, which I drew up yesterday evening and I'm cutting them out of 332nd balsa on the Algo Laser Delta and then in a couple of minutes I shall assemble it all. Great stuff. Okay and there it is, let's just turn stuff off. There we go. Hey presto. Okay, let me assemble those first and then we'll work our way across. So that's the fin glued up. That didn't take long, did it? And I'll do the same with the rudder and the elevator components and then we'll reconvene when things are dry. So I've laid that one up now, so it's just a matter of unpinning this one. An hour or two has actually passed because I've been uh, entertaining. <laughs> okay. Hold it down when you pull the pins out. This needs to be sanded flat, like that. Let's have another look at the fuselage while the tailplane's drying, shall we? This picture's going to give me the shape of the cockpit as it comes down and across. I have to emulate that shape because that's where the cockpit lays in, which I've yet to calculate. The easiest way there is just to pinprick it. Oh, 
Right, let's have a look. So it's got to be sanded, of course, but that's the shape. So I've cut the other side to the same shape and then sand it. I've got to sand the turtle deck at the back, get that sort of rounded up and, and um, use my David plane on that to take down a little bit extra. And then um, we can unpin the tail. Okay, first mock up with the tail in place. And still got to round the top and work out the front hatch and all that sort of stuff but there we go put that to one side i'm going to look at the wing now the wing hasn't been sanded yet and it hasn't been i've got to um put one 30 second sheet crossways on the center section Trim the back of edge, back edge off in a minute. Uh, so that wants to go on there like that. Something very satisfying actually about sheeting the center section. Look at that, it's beautiful. I've just had to tickle this. I'm scraping off as much glue as I can, by the way, and then you don't have to sand it. I've had to um, just sand it, just custom make that bit just to fit in there perfectly. And it's going to fly with an undercarriage down. Perfect. Uh, just want to bend down from there. It's going to stitch in there like that. That's okay. Looks about right. That's the wing done or bar separating it now then. Which I suppose I could do. Okay. Do the other side while I'm here. This should now in theory pull out. This is only going to need a small amount of movement, something like that I envisage. The plan is for that to pivot to allow it to turn. I had an inspirational thought in the night on how to hook up the uh, flapping wing panels, aileron panels. I hope they're not flapping. <laughs> um, and that was instead of putting the servo underneath and hooking it onto the actual pivot bar, which is this central bar which goes down through the red, made up a pair of long arms. I've cut them out of one eighth ply uh, and the servos will sit across here. I'm going to have four, uh, what are they, about four and a half gram servos. The two on the outside will be for the aileron and the two on the inside will be rudder and elevator. Motor fit in time. Got the back plate and I'm just drilling some holes uh, for the screws to go through into I've got 16th ply on the front. Okay, so I've done a rather lovely job of that. Uh, unfortunately, I've just remembered, stroke realised, um, I wasn't going to uh, glue the motor to that bulkhead, so I've just wasted the last half an hour um, because. The spinner is such a big spinner on this Spitfire that I thought I would build this out a little bit to probably about there. Don't forget these have got the prop savers on so the propeller can flex a bit and that's not going to happen if I've got a nose right in the front so I might have to make it look as much of a spinner as possible. I mean it's never going to be round but it'll just look the part. I've made a motor mount. We've got a 1 16th disc with holes in it to allow for the screw heads, which are a little bit proud. And I didn't need them in a quarter inch bolster, so 
that needs to be glued to that and then that can screw onto that and then that can glue onto the front of the F1 like that and then I can build up some cheeks and sand the whole lot into shape including the top hatch one there and will hold that lovely and we'll come back to that in a while okay it's stuck and I'm just going to, I think, just pop it on there with white glue with the double one at the bottom. Level with the top, equal both sides. Just for a good measure, I'll just run a little bit of CA on the sides, sort of lock it in place a bit. I think, guys, I've added the cheeks on the side and some sheeting on the bottom and I'm just going to trim it now prior to sanding it and the easiest way to do that is just to rock it otherwise you end up splitting it so the bit I'm cutting is the bit that's actually in contact with the mat so lots of sanding to do and when I've got it done I'll come back to you and have a look. Okay, I've just rounded up the bottom a little bit, rounded this section up a bit. Um, I might go a little bit further yet. Also now I'm just working on the on top hatches. I'm going to do it in one eighth. It sounds a lot but it's um, very very soft. It doesn't take much does it? So I'm going to put a bit there. In fact, this back bit could be glued on. Now, let's just put a bit there, a little bit there. Okay, so I'll put a weight there as well. Don't forget, this is a very standoff scale. It was never supposed to be a scale aeroplane. So I'm going to turn this block of balsa into a cockpit. Um, I'm going to mould it around a um, pop bottle, like I've done in the past. I've got videos on my channel to show you how to do it. And um, you start off with a block of balsa wood. Just thought I'd show you this before I got too carried away. So I've printed out the uh, top view and side views of my uh, chosen design, <laughs> which is a Spitfire of course, and drawn them on the block. I'm now cutting out the block um, to that shape, because until I've got that shape, I can't. there's not much I can do. It's better if you can plane it off more than sand it, because show you a close-up so there's the rough block side view top view I'm just going to start now hacking out the curve for the back window shape and uh, doesn't look much like a Spitfire cockpit at the moment but I'm going to keep chiseling away and start sanding and what have you and we'll see what we get there we go guys I've done a rough hewn it doesn't much look like a spear I got bit to be honest, but it'll make it'll make a, a reasonable representation. So I've just been looking at that one as I've been going. It's uh, sort of getting there. So I'll do a little bit more to it, then I'll film having a go with the bottle and we'll see what we can do. So this is what I've now got. I've stuck some one thirty second strips of balsa roughly where the um, canopy frame goes. Let me show you uh, an ideal bottle. This is like um, I think it was a Coca-Cola. Yeah, one of the Coca-Cola brands. But what you're looking for is a bottle that's got you can't avoid these ridges going around the outside but they should disappear when we tighten it out. 
Um, there's a seam down here, and there's a seam the other side. It's got static on it now. And uh, so you don't want a seam running through the middle of your piece. You'll have to go to one side. Uh, it's a horrible sticky bit there, so I'm not going to use that. So this is my ideal side. Um, but what does spoil it slightly up here is I've got a number stamped into it, the um, drink by number. So obviously I've got to avoid that. So I'm going to choose the, this area here. Saw this the other day online, guys. What's that, Cliff? Well, this where you can just hang your tool up if you want to, like that. All you do, really good, going to all mine now. You make a go up there like that, you make a loop at the top big enough to put the plug through, and you wind your cable like that round and round and round until you can't wind anymore. Pass it through the loop and then the line that went up the handle, pull it down and that locks it in. Keeps everything neat. How cool is that? And then to get it off, you just push that line back up again. When that is big enough to get the plug through, and wind it. In there. By the way, it pays to have a few plastic bottles spare. That can go just about there actually, because the line goes from the front of there down to there. So, but I want to avoid the date stamp. Okay, it feels quite thick plastic, so not sure how we're going to get on. It's not going to shrink down very much here, so we'll be lucky to get it down on the front. Maybe I ought to turn it around. Because in theory, that's already shrunk that much. Let's, I'm going to turn it around, you know. As you see, basically, I'll just keep experimenting until you get somewhere. Okay, see what happens. You can't go back. We're going to start on the front. I'm going to try shrinking it at the bottom here to pull the top down. It's going to work enough. I'm not counting the chickens, but it's looking 100% better than the last one. already okay not per not perfect at the front but after the trouble we've had with the other two attempts that's not bad um, I'm happy with that look at that that went straight down so it's a matter really of of picking the right angle was asking a lot of a bottle but this is quite thick plastic with quite a high shrink rate so that was Lucasade small Lucasade bottle and um, yeah, it's not bad at all and the front panel's pretty flat ah, there we go simple okay let's look at trimming it a bit now I can clean it up and we can offer it in now that goes up and it won't wash in We trimmed around these front edges because it's not actually a curve, so I know that. It's a funny shape, it's not quite as it should be. It wanted to have more of a bulge in the middle, but there you go. I am only an amateur, sir. But yeah, there we go. Let's survive being a bottle. It's going to take a tiny little bit out of here just to ease it around the corner, but I think that's worked out okay. It's a bit of a comedy shape, admittedly. Um, it's not quite the same as the other one. The bulge is too far forward. It should have been further back and then coming down more, but it's okay. 
I'm going to finish the inside a little bit, um, put an instrument panel on and paint the interior. And I've got, got to put a former here. This is the piece of steel work behind the pilot's head to protect him from rear bullets. Um, so I've got to put that in. So there we are. So I've got number one, which was usable at a pinch. Number two is a bit worse. Number three was even worse. But number four all came together. Yeah, really quite pleased with that. And that was the Lucasade bottle, thicker plastic and uh, smaller. So next step is to uh, put that rear former in there and I'm going to fit the servos tomorrow. Cheers guys. So the pilot's headrest is roughly shaped like that. I'm not going to uh, take measurements or anything. So the pilot will be in there, but I can't put a seat in because I'm going to have control runs going down there. So the um, seat will have to be, well, the pilot will just be sitting on a little cross piece or something. But I'll attend to that after I've got the push rods in. So you put the cockpit on it just to see, see what it looks like. Here we go. There we go, just about there. Obviously it's not held down with tape, but... Put it forward a bit, just there. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Some headrest.